Businesses that deliver physical goods must decide where to place their warehouses. It's a difficult and computationally intensive problem, but you can find a solution using Solver's evolutionary engine. In this video, I'll show you how a delivery based business or a business which involves transportation of goods from their site to a project's location or a client's location, like on a construction project, can optimize their operations based on distance. So the goal is to locate warehouses to minimize the distance traveled. In Excel, you can represent the location of your warehouses and your stores or delivery points on an XY scatter plot. Here's what one sample map would look like. In this case, I have a set of 10 stores in blue and the warehouses or the depots from which deliveries are made are represented in orange. You'll notice that at the bottom center, there is an orange dot right on top of a blue dot. What that tells you is that you either should co-locate the facilities if you can, or if not, you should put that warehouse as close to that position as you can. Let's switch to Excel now. So what you're seeing on my screen is that we have five columns of 10 values. They are store ID, stores X coordinate and stores Y coordinate. Then we have the depot number that is the depot which will be assigned to each store location in such a way that the distance traveled is minimum. For now, it's just one depot assigned to all the stores, but it will change when we create and run our model. Then we have the distance of that depot from the store location, which will be calculated in column E using a Pythagorean theorem, which is A square plus B square equal to C square. The formula I'm using here is basically a square root of the difference in coordinates of the two locations, which is a store and a depot. In this formula, I'm using an offset function which gives me the coordinate of the corresponding depot which is assigned to the store. Then in this highlighted area of column G, H and I, we have the depot related data. Solver model will create these coordinates for us when we build our model. Then we have the minimum and maximum X and Y coordinates which will help our solver model understand the area within which it has to place the depots for optimization purpose. And in the end, after we create and run our model, we can get the number of stores to which each depot will be assigned. And to count the number of depots being assigned to different stores in column D, I'm using the count if formula. Now that we are aware of all the data on this sheet, let's add a scatter plot, which can show the location of each store and depot. To add that, first select the X and Y coordinates of all the store location, then click on insert tab and select this option of scatter plot. So now we can see the plotted positions of all the different stores. To add the location of different depots to the same chart, right click on it, click on select data and add the X and Y coordinates of the depot location. And now that we're done with the chart, let's start with creating the solver model. To do that, click on the data tab and then on the rightmost side in the analyze group, you can see the solver option. Click on solver and you'll see a dialog box that will appear. First step is to set the objective, which is to minimize the total distance travel. So we'll select the cell I11 and choose the minimize option. Next, we must tell solver which variables it's allowed to change to achieve this objective we have just set. And those values are the X and Y coordinates of different depots and the depot number to which different stores are assigned. Final step in the process of creating this model is to add the constraint to your solver model. To first constraint is to restrict the X and Y coordinates of all the depots within the X and Y coordinates we have on this sheet. Let's do that. Next, we want all the depot numbers in column D to be between 1 and 3 so that the offset function we are using to calculate the distance between the locations can look for the respective depot coordinates which will be generated by the model when we run it. And in the end, we want all the depot numbers in column D to be integers as depots in our scenario are all numbered 1 to 3. 
and those are integers. So I need to ensure that we don't have any partial values which would cause an error. Now that we have set our objective and added all the required constraint, we need to make sure that the solving method for our model is set to evolutionary because it's not possible to solve a scenario using simplex LP or GRG nonlinear. Click on solve. And the solver results dialog box has appeared and it indicates that there is a solution. So I'll click OK and we can look at the map and the worksheet. We can see that solver model has improved the results by around 75% by reducing the distance of travel from depot location to stores. One important thing to note is when we use the evolutionary option in solver model, the results generated are not always optimal. And also when we run the simulation several times, we don't get the same results. So I strongly recommend that we run multiple trials and pick the best results from it. If you want to run multiple trials, you can do that. I'll bring the solver back up by going to the data tab and clicking the solver button. And then with the evolutionary method still selected, I'll click the options and then in the options dialog box, click the evolutionary tab. And here you can see the random seed box. The random seed is the number that Excel inputs to start the randomization process. It uses an algorithm to determine the pseudo random numbers. So it's not truly random process, which means that you will get the same results every time you run it with the given random seed number. However, if you change that seed to a different positive integer, then you will get a different result. Once you're done changing this, click OK. And then from the solver parameter dialog box, you can click solve to solve the problem using the different starting point.